What's up everybody? So what is better than getting parts? That's right, nothing. There's nothing better than getting parts and I've got a couple big boxes here. Let's check them out. Okay, now let's take a close look in this box. Hey, did I scare you guys? Oh, the things I do to entertain you blokes. <coughs> it's my Mitch in a box. Okay, enough, enough. We have actual work to do. Come on, let's get to it. All right, let's take an even closer look at all this stuff. So first up we have the 4140 forged steel lightweight flywheel. Now as you can see, this isn't like a, a super aggressive race version. It's uh, like a street light flywheel. Um, this should work out great for our needs, especially compared to the condition of our other one. Now moving on to the clutch kit, it includes uh, Competition Clutch's 2,600 pound pressure plate, a segmented ceramic sprung clutch disc, and then all the tools you need to install it, the alignment tool and the new throwout bearing. And then there's also some instructions and stuff like that they throw in. So that's the clutch kit, really happy with it, looks good so far. And like I said, I ordered a couple other things. Here is the new clutch master cylinder. This one is specific to the Gallant VR4, so you can't just chuck a DSM one in there. And, and then here's the slave cylinder. So we'll get all of our hydraulics in good shape and uh, make sure that that doesn't cause any problems. Because the last thing you want is to throw a rebuilt transmission in there and then have you know, uh, a kind of a wore out master cylinder or slave cylinder causing shifting issues and wearing out your synchros and stuff like that. And I mentioned before, I got some new gaskets and then there's our new oil feed kit, which will come from the oil filter housing instead of from the top of the cylinder head as we had it before. So, all right, bunch of new stuff, ready to go. All right, so we don't need this stuff right now, so I guess we should box it all up and put it away. Okay, so everything is exactly how we left it uh, in our last video. I've still got the engine, the old Gallant engine, on my patented old tire stand there. Um, so the work from here gets a little slow and tedious. One job we have is while the Gallant's engine bay was very clean from the top portion, uh, once you get below the surface here, where I, <laughs> those hard to reach areas that I could never get to with the engine in there, it's a little grimy. It might not look terrible on camera, but uh, you can see like that area back in there, kind of bad. And uh, over here, I started on a little spot there, but uh, I'll need to work this over a little bit. This will take some time. Definitely slow, tedious work, but worth doing when you have the engine out. Uh, as far as the stock Gallant engine, there are lots of accessories and things that are going to have to come off of this and go over to the old Talon engine. Um, things like uh, these motor mount brackets. Uh, the AC bracket here, bolted to the block. We got the intake manifold, cam angle sensor, this water neck, uh, of course the whole turbo assembly, the whole timing assembly, uh, this motor mount bracket, uh, all this stuff. 
I also plan on putting this um, oil filter housing from the Gallant onto the Talon engine. The Talon engine has a forward-facing non-cooled housing and uh, I would just like to run this cooled, this water-cooled housing uh, since I'll be driving this car on the street primarily. So that'll be a little job we have to do. So there's a lot of little jobs that are going to add up here that are going to take some time. Okay, so after seeing that fully dressed Gallant engine, this definitely looks very bare. But there's still some disassembly we need to do here. I need to take that water pipe off. We're going to use the one from the Gallant. Um, I need to pull those head studs out and go over the um, block surface again, make sure that's good and clean. And, uh, and there's a variety of other little things too. I'll probably change out the water pump and maybe some of these other timing components. They've been on there a good while. Oh, and we need to seal up that oil pan for good. There's definitely some work to be done here. Thanks, fellas. Y'all are the best. So when I'm working on my Mitsubishis, I often don't know the right or best way to do things. I mean, service manuals are great, and the internet is powerful, but those things will only get you so far. When I need real help, I call Joe. Anytime, pretty much, day or night, he's always cheerful and willing to help out. Oh, hey, Joe. Hey, um, what's the name of that thing? Um, it's on the block, it's like on the timing belt side, it's got like a bolt going through it. Um, what is that? Oh, uh, oh, and what's the part number for that? All right, Joe, thanks, see ya. Joe, what was that guy's name we knew back in like 2000? Hey, Joe, um, what's a good meatloaf recipe? Hey, Joe, just a quick thing. Um, are cargo pants still like in fashion? You see how easy that was? Man, I tell you, Joe is great. You know what? Actually, that gives me an idea. I bet Joe won't mind. All right, here's the deal. If you have a question about your Mitsubishi or whatever kind of car you have, just call Joe. Here, I'll get his info here. All right, folks, here we go. Here's uh, Joe's number, 941-444-4149. Um, now, he is a pretty busy dude, so you know, um, just leave him a message if he doesn't pick up, and I'm sure he'll get right back to you.
Hey folks, I'm just going to go ahead and apologize in advance. I know I'm not doing much videoing right now and I'm jumping ahead, but the truth is when I get in a situation like this where I really have to concentrate, I'm just not good at documenting that process. It was the same with the V8 Miata build when I did the wiring. I was trying to capture that on video, but I just couldn't. I had to concentrate and focus and moving the camera around and stuff was just distracting me and causing me to make mistakes. So if you've ever tried to video yourself working in the garage, I'm sure you would understand. Uh, if you haven't, just take my word for it. It's tricky. So where we're at right now is I've cleaned off the block surface, the deck surface. I've checked uh, to make sure it's completely flat. If you want to see all that in great detail, I highly recommend you check out Jaffro Mobile's channel. He's done a superb job of documenting all that with uh, specific how-to information and measurements, and he's just a genius in that regard. So I defer to him and, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, here's the reconditioned cylinder head from our old Talon. I sent it up to Busher Racing. That's who I originally purchased it from back in the day, and uh, they went all through it, uh, checked it over, made sure it was in good shape, cleaned it up for me, and now it's ready to go back on. There's those ported out intake runners. And the exhaust ports have been hogged out too. Okay, now that we have the head installed, it's time to lube up the threads of the head studs with this ARP fastener lube. Okay, so now that we have the head on the engine, the next job is to put the ARP nuts onto these studs. Um, we'll do that now. So for this go around, we're just hand tightening all these um, based on the instructions after we get them all hand tightened, then we begin our torquing down procedure. Okay, so what we're doing is following the factory tightening procedure and tightening them in three even steps. So now we're at 60 foot-pounds. Alright folks, that's all the time I have in the garage today. Uh, I appreciate all your support and kind words. And with that said, thanks again folks. We'll see you next time.